A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. To the presence of the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For he is good, the Lord whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When a large crowd gathered with the people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled. And the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on the rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then the disciples asked him, What is the meaning of this parable? He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they might look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones when they hear and receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in a time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, 
and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. How's our soil? How's our soil? Uh, as I was reflecting on, on this very familiar parable, uh, the sower and the seed, I feel like we get this 10 times a year. I, I don't know if it's actually true, but I just feel like we get this one frequently throughout the, the year to reflect on. And all analogies limp, as they say, meaning you can, you know, all analogies at some point break down and they're, they're not perfect analogies. But uh, as I was in prayer for this, uh, this morning, I felt that what the Lord was saying was, how, how is our soil, namely each of the four soils, were in their state when they received the word of God? So you had the path, the rocky, the weedy, and the good soil. And they were, they were in their current state when the word of God then came to them. And that soil was then able to receive the word of God in relation to the state of that soil. And I know for all of us, our, our soils go through seasons, right? They go through seasons. We may be at different places of that soil, but... As I reflected on these soils, I think, I think of the path. And I know my, my life ends up with path soil when, when I'm just constantly, I'm just going. I'm, I'm back and forth all the time. There's not much time to stop, to reflect. I'm just going. I am got places to be. I've got, you know, ministry to do. I've got God to serve and people to take care of. And next thing I know, that word of God is coming. And it's just bouncing off my soil. And I know there's seasons where there's, I'm, I'm in that rocky soil. And, and what is that for us? That's, I, I started tilling things and I got far enough to where I could maybe put some seeds down. But then I just left it alone. I, I just didn't go all the distance and actually pull out those other rocks, get those things out so that I could carve out a nice path, put some furrows in. I just, I just got started and I didn't finish cleaning house. I didn't get out the things that are the obstacles. And that's what those rocks are, right? They're obstacles. A seed comes in and, and it, it actually can't take root because it's there. Uh, then we have the seasons that, uh, no, we've tilled the soil and it, it produced seeds, but <laughs> the, weeds, the weeds got in there as well. And for whatever reasons, the weeds grow much easier than the healthy seeds. Uh, you don't even have to work for the weeds. They just come. And those are the seasons where I'm not attentive to those near occasions of sin. I'm not attentive to those things that can choke the life out of the word. And I just let them grow. And then there's the last soil, which is the, the fertile, well-plowed, well-tilled, no rocks, no weeds, nothing. It's just ready for the seed and it produces abundant fruit. So I know throughout my life, my, uh, I find myself in different seasons of soil. Where is your soil this morning? What are the things that need to be just hard pan chipped out? I grew up in California, Central Valley. If you didn't have a pickaxe, you weren't digging anything in that dirt out there. I mean, every day I put a shovel in Anytime out here, I'm just always amazed at how wet and soft the dirt is. It's amazing. Are you at the path? Are you at the rocks? Are there things that you stop short of getting out of your life that the Lord is saying, get those things out? Is it the weeds, cares of the world, the stuff that's so easy for us to be attracted to, that's choking their life? Or are we ready to hear the word of the Lord with that tilled soil? So that's my question for me this morning. 
What is God asking me to do with my soil? Where is my soil? I think he's asking all of us this morning because he's desiring to produce fruit. And when that word of God comes, is our soil ready to receive that word? So let's ask the Holy Spirit that as we come to the table of the Lord this morning. Where's my soil? Maybe there's sections. Maybe you've got like four crops going and this one is path. (laughs) This one is tilled. Uh, There's a little mixture. Uh, We like to compartmentalize. Uh, Let's ask the Holy Spirit, what, how is my soil this morning? And Lord, what are you wanting to till and uproot, dislodge from my life? Or maybe you are that fertile ground this morning and just say thanks be to God for the massive fruit that he's pouring out through your life. Uh, And I I pray that is all of us, at least to some extent. Because the times that we live in right now demand uh, a fruitful people. A fruitful people, free of rocks and weeds and and hardness of heart. Uh, I know I need that. Uh, I'm sure you do too. Uh, So we pray the Holy Spirit will do that for us this morning. Amen?